Tibet is the highest region in China even known as the roof of the world, standing over 13,000 feet above sea level. It's a land of extreme conditions home to Mount Everest, but it's also the third largest reserve of fresh water on Earth after Antarctica and Greenland. Across this frozen region are more than 35,000 glaciers and 1,500 natural lakes, some like Namco and Yamdrak, are so large they can be seen from space. Altogether, these glaciers hold over 2,600 trillion gallons of water, nearly as much as the Mekong River could hold in 50 years. From this plateau, 10 major rivers including the Yangtze Yellow River, Mekong Salween, Irrawaddy Ganges, and Brahmaputra flow out providing water for nearly 2 billion people across Asia. Did you know that the Three Gorges Dam, the largest dam on the planet, was built by China over 17 years? It sits on the Yangtze River, which originates in Tibet, the region we just talked about. More than 40,000 workers poured and set over 35 million cubic yards of concrete, creating a wall of water 1.4 miles long and nearly as tall as a 60-story building. When finished, its cost reached $34 billion enough to build a new city in Europe. So what was the result? The Three Gorges Dam generates 85 billion kilowatt hours of electricity every year, 10 billion more than the previous world record holder, the Ataipu Dam. That's enough to power 80 million homes, the entire population of the Netherlands or half of Japan. On Christmas the 2024, as China celebrates the 13th anniversary of the Three Gorges Dam's opening, the world is once again stunned. Just days after the celebration, Beijing announces a new hydropower project on the Yarlung Tsangpo River, also originating in Tibet, but three times larger than the Three Gorges, with a price tag of $167 billion, four times the cost of the Three Gorges, equivalent to the gross domestic product of Hungary or the International Space Station. This dam will bring permanent changes to China, Asia, and possibly the entire world. Stay with us until the end to find out more. This really happened. The Chinese government officially announced the Madog Hydropower Station project. By early 2025, they finalized the construction site, the Great Bend of the Yarlung Tsangpo River, deep in the Himalayas, in the Madog region of Tibet. If you look at a map, this place is almost unbelievable. The river drops straight down 6,500 feet in just 100 miles, creating the steepest natural slope on Earth. Between two massive rock walls, Namcha Barwa at 25,531 feet and Gyala Peri at 23,963 feet lies a canyon three times deeper than the Grand Canyon. Here the water rushes so fiercely that even birds rarely fly across and expeditions attempting to kayak here have called it a suicide mission. For 40 years, this area was completely closed off. It wasn't until the 1990s that geologists were allowed in and they admitted, nowhere else on earth makes people feel so small. But China doesn't see fear, they see energy. According to plans, the Madog Dam will generate 300 terawatt hours of electricity per year enough to power the entire country of Germany or half of Europe. The structure itself is just as mind-blowing a main dam in the small town of Pai, plus three massive tunnels drilled through Namcha Barwa Mountain, each 21 miles long and dropping 7,900 feet. Water from the Yarlung Changpo will be channeled through these tunnels, spinning hundreds of giant turbines then return to its natural flow. All this energy will travel on ultra-high voltage, direct current lines stretching 1,250 miles to power Shanghai, Shenzhen, and the eastern coast. Chinese geologists claim the area is safe after their surveys. But zoom in on a geological map, and a chilling truth appears. Madog sits right on the collision zone between the world's two largest tectonic plates, the Indian and Eurasian plates. This collision ongoing for 50 million years created the Himalayas, and it's still happening. As a result, the area around the Yarlung Tsangpo is one of the most seismically active spots on the planet. In the 20th century alone, 15% of earthquakes above magnitude 8 struck here. In 1950, an 8.6 quake in Assam changed the river's course, caused massive landslides, and formed a giant temporary lake before it burst, wiping out dozens of villages. Now imagine in this very region, people are planning to bore three 21-mile-long tunnels 
through a mountain that rises about 2.4 inches every year. That means in just 20 years, the entire dam structure could shift several feet from its original design. And the risks don't stop there. If a reservoir-induced earthquake or a glacial lake outburst flood occurs, the whole area could witness a mountain tsunami. But geological dangers aren't the whole story. The area around the Great Bend of the Yarlung Changpo is also one of the most pristine and biodiverse places on Earth. Here live snow leopards, Himalayan black bears, hornbills, and untouched ancient forests. When the dam is built, hundreds of square miles of forest will be submerged, and many unique species could disappear forever. It's not just nature, people here will pay a price too. Thousands of Tibetans will be forced to leave the Namcha Barwa region considered the gateway to heaven in Buddhism. For them, this isn't just home, it's sacred ground where souls are reborn. Small villages and centuries-old monasteries will all be buried under an artificial lake dozens of feet deep. We saw this with the Three Gorges Dam, 1.4 million people lost their homes, and over 1,300 historical sites were submerged. This time, the same could happen again. Even though China promises the project won't affect downstream areas, they've never signed the 1997 United Nations Convention on the Law of Non-Navigational Uses of International Watercourses. Remember those rivers we talked about starting in the Tibetan Plateau and flowing through 10 countries supporting nearly half of Asia's population? The Brahmaputra is one of them, the name for the Yarlung Changpo, after it leaves Tibet, winding through India and Bangladesh. But it's more than just a river. In India, it irrigates 15 million acres of rice fields and provides water for 130 million people in Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. In Bangladesh, where 65% of the country's water comes from this system, more than 170 million people depend on every flood and tide to survive. Now imagine China controls 30% of the water flow in the entire system, the most important part during the dry season. If Beijing holds back water for just a few months to fill the reservoir, the Assam and Bengal deltas could crack and dry up, crops would fail, and millions of farmers would lose their livelihoods. On top of that, half the silt from Tibet would be trapped behind the dam, leaving India and Bangladesh's deltas starved of natural replenishment, causing erosion and allowing salt water from the Bay of Bengal to invade farmland. Estimates say that just a 5% drop in water flow could cut Bangladesh's agricultural output by 15% enough to push millions into poverty. The domino effect has already started to cope. India announced the $1.2 billion Siang Dam right downstream of the Yarlung Changpo. But ironically, as India tries to hold water for itself, Bangladesh at the end of the river suffers even more. A silent water war is taking shape right on the roof of the world. And when water becomes a weapon, the next question is, who can stop it? The scary truth is no one. China has never signed the 1997 United Nations Convention on Sharing International Water Resources. That means there's no treaty forcing them to notify consult or take responsibility if the Brahmaputra's flow changes. India and Bangladesh can protest all they want, but there's no international legal mechanism to make Beijing stop. It's a legal vacuum where water, the most basic resource for life, becomes the absolute power of whoever controls the source. Worse still, the Medog Superdam is just a few miles from the line of actual control, the disputed border between China and India. Zoom in on the map, and you'll see it's so close, you could walk from the dam to contested territory in just a few hours. China calls the Arunachal Pradesh area controlled by India South Tibet. So why is China building this super dam for green energy or green power? Officially, the Medog hydropower station is praised as the hydro battery of the earth, a natural energy plant that could generate up to 300 terawatt hours of electricity per year, three times the Three Gorges Dam enough to power all of Germany. All this massive power will be sent through ultra high voltage direct current lines stretching over 1,200 miles from Tibet to Shanghai and Shenzhen with less than 3% energy loss. That electricity isn't just for lighting up homes. It will run green hydrogen plants, producing over 1 million tons a year, power massive artificial intelligence data centers consuming tens of gigawatts, and support green aluminum and steel production for export. 
China already makes over 70% of the world's solar panels and green materials, and the Maydog project is seen as the final piece in greening its heavy industry supply chain. But behind the slogan clean energy for the future lies another reality, whoever controls Tibet controls the water sources for over 2 billion Asians. On a geopolitical scale, Medog isn't just a dam, it's a tool to shape the region's energy order. The Three Gorges Dam symbolized 20th century power, but the Himalayas could become the green dominant symbol of the 21st century. On the surface, the Medog Super Dam is just an energy project. But look from space, and you'll see something incredible from Tibet. China is quietly redrawing the map of Asia. In the past, power was where the oil was. Today, it's where the world's most reliable renewable energy is. Tibet has it all, altitude powerful rivers, strong sunlight and constant wind. Beijing is turning what was once the roof of the world into the central energy battery for the entire continent. Look at the expanding plan, a continent-spanning supergrid connecting Tibet Xinjiang and Yunnan with Southeast Asia. South Asia, even Central Asia and Europe. According to China's State Grid Corporation, each ultra-high voltage, direct current line stretches over 1,800 miles with a capacity of 12 to 16 gigawatts enough to power a country like Vietnam or Malaysia. They call this vision the Asia ASEAN Eurasia Power Grid where electricity from the Himalayas can travel thousands of miles with only 3% energy loss. If this plan is completed, power from Himalayan dams will flow into international grids, reaching industrial centers and ports, fueling artificial intelligence hubs, green hydrogen plants, and export zones. Then China won't just sell goods like last century, it will sell clean energy data and digital infrastructure. This means Asia's power map is shifting from oil pipelines in the Middle East to power lines starting in Tibet. No armies, no territory needed, just control the energy arteries linking 10 countries, and China can become the artificial heart of the continent. As of now, the Madog Hydropower Station mega project has officially entered its first construction phase, turning the dream of conquering the Himalayan rivers into reality. Chinese engineering teams have drilled test tunnels in Pai Town, set up seismic sensors around Namcha Barwa, and opened supply routes through treacherous terrain. The project is directly overseen by China Energy Group and the National Development and Reform Commission. According to the plan, Medog will complete all 90 giant turbine units before 2033. When finished, this will be the largest hydropower plant on the planet breaking their own record and generating enough electricity for over 300 million people. The combined populations of Germany, France, and Italy. But the question is, what will the price be? If the project succeeds, it could usher in a great clean energy era, turning the Himalayas into the natural power station of the Earth. But a single mistake, a quake, a geological fault, or a tunnel failure could trigger disaster for thousands of miles downstream, where over 400 million people live. So what do you think? Is this humanity's giant leap forward or the riskiest gamble in modern history? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to keep exploring more unbelievable but true stories like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're just getting started.